folks, so I wanted to talk with you today about um, the batch melting equation that shows up in winter. I want to derive it, but the most important thing I want to get across is that it's, it's not just a batch melting equation. It's actually a very general statement of the mathematics of um, mass balance. So let's, let's write out the equation. The equation is uh, CL over C naught is equal to one divided by, let's see, what is it? D times the constant, no, that's D times one minus F plus F, right? Does that, that look right? Okay, so in this system, C is a concentration of something in the liquid. It could be an element, um, it could be a compound. Um, C naught is the concentration in the original rock before it melted. At least this is how it's presented. D is the distribution coefficient between the rock and the liquid. F is the fraction of melting. Okay, so let's step back a minute and let's just think about a very general system um, that has some concentration C naught of some element or compound in it. And let's just split it into two different things. Okay, so we start off with our system. And it has some concentration in it, which is C naught. Now this system can be anything. It can be a rock, which is what the batch melting equation would, would say. It could be a liquid. It could be, it could be a whole rock that's a mixture of, uh, of uh, crystals and liquid. It could be a vapor, it could be anything. Um, but the important thing is that it has something in it uh, that has uh, an element or compound that has a uh, concentration that's C naught. We're going to split this into two parts. And in one part, we're going to have reservoir A. This is A, and it has some concentration A, and it has some mass A. And we're going to have another component over here, which is B. And it has concentration B, and it has mass of B. I forgot to mention that the system also has a total mass, which we're going to call capital M. OK, so the way mass balance works is that you can't gain or lose mass. So whatever the mass is in the system, originally has to be equal to the sum of the mass of A to the mass of B. So if we have whatever it is, uh, let's say a kilogram of rock, and we make 400 grams of liquid, um, then we have to have 600 grams of rock left over. That's all that that says. So we can write this out. We can say that M is equal to MA plus MB, right? Or we could say that M A is equal to M minus M B. Okay, that's a condition of mass balance. It says that you can't gain or lose mass. These have to be related to each other. Now you can write another um, mass balance expression that says that, uh, that expresses the concentration, um, sorry, that expresses the mass balance of whatever element or compound we are choosing to look at, this, this C naught. Now C naught is expressed on a mass basis. So if you want to talk about, you know, how many, uh, how much of uh, whatever tungsten you have in a system, you have to say what? You have to say what the concentration is. And then if you're really talking about a system, you want to talk about what the total mass of the system is. So for example, if tungsten is five ppm, so what's a ppm? It's a it's a milligram per kilogram. And if I have a kilogram of rock, that means I literally have five milligrams of tungsten in it. If I've got a half a weight percent of uh, Na2O and I've got 100 grams of rock, then it means I have a half a gram of, uh, of uh, Na2O, okay? So there's another mass balance expression that describes the mass balance of whatever element or compound we're talking about. 
And that takes this form. That is going to be, uh, let's see, the concentration of the element in our original material times the mass of that original material has to be equal to the what concentration of A times the mass of A plus the concentration of B times the mass of B. So let's just do a little simple uh, thought experiment. So let's take our, uh, our five milligrams of tungsten in um, a kilogram of rock, okay? So if I split this into two parts and I say, okay, I've got a liquid here and let's say it's 500 grams and this is 500 grams. And I say, oh, this has a concentration of five PPM, okay? Well, five PPM times 500 grams is gonna be 2.5 PPM. What I have left over here has to be 2.5 PPM or 2.5, 2.5 milligrams. What I have left over here is 2.5 milligrams because I started out with five. Well, 2.5 milligrams distributed over 500 grams is gonna be five PPM. So in other words, if I take a kilogram of material with a concentration of five PPM and I split it up into two components and I say this component has a concentration of five PPM, well, this one has to have a concentration of five PPM. That's what this equation is, is basically saying. Now, what we can do then is we can start to combine terms. And I gotta make sure I do this right. So we say, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna divide through by M. Okay, so we're gonna divide this by the mass of our original system. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a substitution of this expression over here that the mass of A has to be equal to the total mass of the system minus the mass of B. Okay, so this is gonna get substituted into here. Okay, so what does that get us to? That gets us C naught is equal to where we have CA times M minus MB divided by M plus CB, which that's supposed to count the way, CB mass of B divided by M, okay? Now we're gonna make one other definition and we are going to define, we're gonna say, F is equal to the mass of B divided by M. So now if we rewrite all of this, we get C naught is equal to CA one minus F plus CB times F. And now we're gonna make one other other definition, what we're gonna say is that the distribution coefficient is gonna be equal to the concentration of A divided by the concentration of B. And we're gonna multiply this term by the concentration of B divided by the concentration of B. So this is gonna be times CB divided by CB. And you can see now CA over CB is the distribution coefficient. So now we get the expression C naught is equal to, what's this gonna be? D, concentration of B, one minus F, plus the concentration of B times F. And now I think you can see that if you um, start to uh, combine terms, you'll get back to this, uh, to this expression. So what, what are we gonna end up with? Uh, let's see, we have to get C, we take one over this, divide by one over that, and we can take the CB out here. So we have CB over C naught is equal to one divided by D times C sub B, one minus F plus F, right? So that's our, that's our expression. 
so that is that is our uh, batch melting equation, except not, and this is the key point. I didn't say anything about what process we were undergoing here. I didn't say we start with a rock and B is the melt and A is the solid. All I said is that we take something and we split it up into two parts that have different masses and potentially have different, different concentrations. So this applies, this expression applies to anything, any kind of mass balance problem. If you take a liquid, okay, so that would be our, the concentration of whatever element or compound in the liquid would be our C naught. And we split it into a solid and a liquid. And we express our, if we say D is our liquid and we say D is our, is our distribution coefficient, then we can talk about the concentration of elements in the solid and elements in the liquid according to the fraction of liquid that is there. Even though what we're doing is not actually partially melting, what we're doing is taking a melt and we're solidifying out some solid material, okay? And it can be, like I said, it can be anything. You could take a melt and you could vaporize material. And as long as you express the distribution coefficient correctly in terms of one, uh, one volume of material versus another volume of material, as long as you express the, the fractions correctly, then the equation works out, works out perfectly. So, um, Again, this is, just to, this is just to emphasize that although this is used and, and often presented in terms of batch melting, um, it's much more general and you can apply it to all kinds of different uh, scenarios. In igneous and metamorphic petrology, a lot of times what we talk about is, um, is batch melting, but it all, most importantly, it works equally well for batch solidification because the, the concept behind it is just you're taking one reservoir and you're splitting it into two different reservoirs. All right, thanks.